Vittori already had two or maybe three fights already in the UFC at that point. Mm. Um, Vittori was not Bellator, all right? I don't want you to misquote me here. Not the Bellator champion, but wait for it, bruv. The Venator champion, bruv. <laughs> What's that, bruv? Spartans, what is your profession? <laughs> Yes, people, another edition of Nights at the Roundtable Discussions, where we discuss all sports all the time. Got my guy, too, with me. How are you doing, sir? What's up, bruv? What is going on, man? As always, bruv, on time, on point, with another fight talk, bruv. I'm here, Nate Diaz of Dentistry, with the Adrian Broner of podcast. No, don't you dare <laughs> say that, bro. <laughs> Our boys, you know what I mean? Show some love. You get me, bro. What are you saying, bro? You good? <laughs> no, I'm all good, bro. Man, said, hey, listen, that is Mr. K.A. and you lot's boy, bro. That is you Hey, bro, listen, Man, that's our boy. That is that, our boy. That, stop trying to tell people that that's our boy, bro. <laughs> that's bro our about, boy. about bullshit, bro. He is a rich journeyman, bro. That's listen, what he is. A, B, about billions. You get me, bro. <laughs> Let me just say this, yeah. Yeah. on our WhatsApp group, yeah, like we all have a difference in, of opinions when it comes to fighters, but there's one guy that draws oh, us all fire. together, yeah, and that is <laughs> A.B., bruv, that is Adrian Broder, bruv. I want to hear you tell the truth that, yeah? <laughs> bruv, fuck the truth, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> he knows, he knows what's up, bruv. The truth knows the truth, bruv, and it's about billions, bruv, you get me? <laughs> That and Mr. Audley Harrison, bruv. Oh, A-force. my days. A-force, bruv. <laughs> to this day, bruv, I haven't, the truth and I haven't forgiven him for this guy trying to convince us. He convinced us that that left hand was going to land. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bruv. I swear he was local as well, wasn't he? Bruv, like- he tried to, bruv, he tried to claim... He tried to claim places in Northwest, bro. He tried to claim Harlesden. He tried to claim Blitbridge. At one point, he tried to claim Wembley. I was like, this bro, guy, yeah, yeah. bro. <laughs> bro, I remember what I, I remember hearing um, fucking Kingsbury, bro. See what I'm saying? Just anywhere bro. in Northwest, bro. Listen, to all you man watching out there, yeah? Like, drop a comment. Let us know where a Force is really <laughs> from, bro. <laughs> you get me, bro. We need to get to the bottom of this. Oh man! Oh, oh people, listen. Bro. I love it when Tooth is here because it's nothing. It's nothing but banter and good vibes, bro. So I cannot complain. But um, yeah, as he said, fight talk is back, episode three, and it is a big one because it is the preview to UFC two six three coming up this weekend. We cannot wait. But before we get into it. As usual, people, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Get them likes up, get them subscriptions up, and all that good stuff. And don't forget to follow us on our social media pages as well. Links are in the description. We may talk about that that exhibition that happened Let's do uh, it, bruv. Let's jump, let's jump straight into it, bruv. <laughs> I don't I really want to give it any airtime. Look, I what, understand. What, what do you make of it, bruv? What do you make bruv, of it? I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen a lot of it. I've seen probably about a minute of it, and that's like highlights. Yeah. I, I had no interest in it whatsoever. At the end of the day, both their guys got their payday. Straight. It was a, it was a spectacle. Can't get onto people for getting their payday. But at the end of the day, we know what we know what Floyd's about. He's about making money. Um, Logan Paul, obviously trying to make money as well. And they both got their pay paydays. Up, so I can't complain. But me loving boxing the way that I do, it's not helpful. Um, I know there's been exhibitions in the past with previous fighters. I mean Ali. Um, two of you know more about the other ex- yeah. exhibitions as well, but yeah, yeah. bro, I just feel like this is a mockery of boxing right now. 
Fuck out of here. Um, I, just, I, I feel like, <laughs> Ram, I, I, just, <laughs> I, I just feel like it's a mockery of boxing right now. And Well, fuck it, bro. Boxing needs to be mocked, bro. Like you got a point. You got a point because the state of boxing isn't purely based on this happening. It's all the politics and nonsense that goes on with it, right? So boxing is as much to blame. If not most of it, boxing should take most of the blame for what is going on because they've created a sport now where in which people can exploit it for personal gain. And the people that actually love the sport and the sweet science are the ones that are suffering. Like I've seen people calling out Floyd and saying Floyd is damaging boxing. Look at what he's done. Uh, he couldn't knock Logan Paul out, blah, blah, blah. End of the day, my man's got his payday. He's thinking about, listen, at the end of the day, my, i got kids. i got to feed my kids. And if I've got the market for people to be stupid enough to go and buy it, right? And for me to make 30 million, even though I done retired out the game, then I can't knock the man for it. Neither can I knock, knock, knock Logan Paul. He's taken a massive opportunity in a sport where in which there is still so much money to be made. And bro, he's made it, bro. Listen, let me use this opportunity to call out Floyd, bro. Hey, mm. Floyd, if you need another fight, bro, like, holler at your boy. You get me, <laughs> <laughs> you get me bro. I will take, bro. I will take half of what fucking Logan Paul took, bro. bro. I'm not even greedy. I'll take a quarter. I'll take a bit. Do you get me, bro? Oh, I'll take less than that, bro. Fuck <laughs> it. Me and you fighting the winner gets Floyd, bro. <laughs> you get me, bro. <laughs> no, bro if, if it's as long as it's in the, in the boxing ring, not it's an octagon, bro. I'm not, I'm not for it. I'm not for that violence, bro. <laughs> bro listen, I, 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 listen, I'll tell Floyd this, bro. I ain't even going to fuck around in front and act like I've got a chance of winning, bro. I'll get like I'll be all up in the press conferences being like, yeah, this dude's about to fucking whip my ass, bro. I ain't gonna go make fucking YouTube videos with Ryan Garcia saying, yeah, I've got the secret recipe to beat Floyd. Like, no, you ain't, bro. You know what? No, you ain't, bro. And that's what I'm oh. saying, bro. You're right. You're absolutely you, you nailed it on the head when you said there's idiots out there that will believe shit like that. But at the end of the day, bro, like oh, I said this from, from the jump. It's a spectacle, mm. man. It's it's mm. just a spectacle. To me, it's no different than when Tyson Fury went over to WWE and done their team. Or mm. Kane Velasquez went over to WWE and done their team. Or Mr. T went over to WWF back in the day mm. and done their team with WrestleMania one or whatever. So that's just the way I see it, bro. It's just like, bro, it's an exhibition fight. People want to go on and uh, go on about, um, oh, Floyd didn't knock him out, this, that, the other. It's like, bro, did you see the size of Floyd, bro? Did Compared you... to him, bro, he was a, he was the size of Logan Paul's upper thigh, bro. <laughs> bro, Logan Paul went in there built like fucking Captain America, bro. Do you get me, bro? Trying to swing. Like he's trying to decapitate Thanos fam. <laughs> Missed with every shot, was the bigger man in terms of weight, mm. was the taller man in terms of height and reach, and through what 217 punches and only landed 28 of them those 28 were all in the clinch and were probably all illegal rabbit shots anyway and people talking about it's a hugging match bro i've watched floyd's or well, most of floyd's career floyd was never an inside fighter bro he would fight yeah. in the pocket but he wasn't a clinch fighter he wasn't one of your like you know like um rugged Mexican fighters that get really tight on the inside and, and let off shots. No, Floyd would stay in the pocket or pick you apart from the outside, bro. Mm. So it, it makes you wonder whose game plan was it to get on the inside and bully the smaller man. It was obviously Logan Paul's game plan. So again, he went in there, spent 25 minutes with a man probably double his size. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but 35 pounds bigger than him. To mm. put that in perspective, that's like Max Holloway fighting Kamaru Usman, bro. Do you get me? Mm. And the guy didn't land a single punch on him. Um, and fuck all the boxing experience, bro. But that is still like, that's schooling, bro. Do you know what I mean? That's just taking someone to school, bro. And showing them levels, bro. So, yeah, man. And, and the main thing, uh, look, the silver lining in all of this 
the be all end all in all of this is like you said the money bro like mm. who the fuck would turn that down you give canelo alvarez an opportunity to box you know after he's retired and shit to box fucking freddie flintoff bro do you get me he would take that bro he would take of that, course fact, and people he, people will say uh, people will say he's got no integrity and bro bridging <laughs> listen if imagine man said he's committing legal robberies, bruv. Yes. Why would you why would you turn down that amount of money for what? For Bro, what? I, for a sport, hold on, hold on. Yeah. For a sport, right, that hates the success that you had. Yeah. For a sport that didn't want you to get where you were, right? Why would you turn down that money for boxing? Don't make no yeah. sense. Yeah, straight, bro. It don't make no sense. Now, don't get me wrong. I still think it hurts boxing, but that's because I I love boxing. But at the same time, I'm not I'm not gonna knock a man for for making his money. Imagine this guy is still the biggest draw in boxing, and look how long he's been retired for. What does that tell you? Everyone's like Canelo, Canelo, Canelo. Yes, Canelo's a big draw, but he doesn't do Floyd numbers, and he never will do Floyd numbers because he's not Floyd. Yeah, it's true. Right. It's so true. you can't you can't say, I, oh yeah, Floyd's doing this, that, and the other, when as boxing's moved on, it hasn't moved on from Floyd. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. And the problem, like, look, that's the problem with the sport. It's the sport as a whole. You got all these great fighters that just aren't fighting each other. Off air, we were just talking about um Lennox's um alumni. Do you know what I mean? And all the heavyweights and that era had all had to fight each other bro mm. Dyson had to fight Holyfield Holyfield fought Lennox twice and Lennox had to fight um Tyson and so on and so forth and, uh, and, and Vitali and all that Vitali and all that yeah do you know what I mean they all had to fight each other at some point bro and that was just the rule of the, the game that was the rule of boxing you know what mm. I mean? The best had to fight the best. And mm-hmm. it wasn't just necessarily in the heavyweight divisions. It was across all divisions. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Some of the classic middleweight fights, some of the classic, <laughs> um, like, you know, even in um, the, the featherweight division with Morales, Barrera, and the scene, those guys. Do you get what I mean? Now you look at these guys now, and there's so much politics involved, it's a shame. But I get where they're coming from as well. I get where they're coming from as well. But it's, you know... They're looking out for their own interest and trying to get the best risk to reward ratio. But at the same time, it's kind of just deaded the sport. Like you've got Tia Fimo, my boy, fighting fucking some Greek cunt, bruv, whoever the fuck that is. <laughs> Cambosos, whatever the fuck, some Australian, Greek, Cypriot, like whoever he is, bruv. Like, bro, you've got Javante in your division. You've got Devin Haney in your division. Haney just fought the other day. Haney fought the other day against Linares, bruv, and he mm. looked good, man. He looked good against Linares. And, you know, why aren't these fights happening? Again, so... Bruv, same thing, just... same thing, same thing about that fight that we shall not name. Yeah, and look, what, look what's happened now, which oh, when cool. eventually it gets there, we will talk about those fights, but I refuse yeah. to give them any airtime because, like, fuck them. But, yeah, straight, straight. Um, hey, listen, you've got to give me my flowers, bruv, yeah? That yeah, reminds- you said it. You said from, it. I mean- from Bay last year, mm. March, was it? Well, March or May, when they when they announced that fight, bruv, from that, when that post was put out, I told you, man, on the group, this fight is not happening. I never changed my stance once. No matter That's how true. many times Eddie Hearn came out there and said, one more week, no matter how many times he came out there and said, we're on draft 576 of the contract no matter how many times he said he just got off the phone to some Saudi fuck some Saudi Khaliji like yeah we've got this and that happening they like I told you man this fight is not happening bro and god willing my boy the bronze bomber till this day will not to this day to this day to this day fuck this fucking gypsy out, bruv. Oh my days, bro. But yeah, we'll, we'll leave we'll leave it as that when the time. Yeah, comes. yeah, we'll leave it as that. But even um, a fight, what's it name? Oh god, bruv. Even Crawford and um, yeah, Spence. Spence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruv, exactly. Can, 
Canelo and um, Triple G, the, the trilogy fight. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Bro, there's so Can many fights. Hmm? Even Canelo and Charlo. Canelo and Charlo. There's so many fights out there that boxing needs to make and they won't. And then they wonder why people are turning off it. And you would think, but everyone's got their own interests. As you said, everyone's trying to keep the belts with that person so they can make the most money and blah, blah, blah. But you're going to make the most money if you put those fights together because that's yeah. what people want to see. When it, What is it going to take? And I know that what I know box, I know UFC is still away from boxing in terms of money. But in terms of the model and what Dana's doing, UFC is making so much uprising because yeah. people are getting the fights that they want to see. Yeah. We're getting another one, which we're going to get into very shortly about the three fights, three, the, the three main event fights that we've got on one card. Yeah, and we can't, we can't even get two fighters to fight to unify or make undisputed, um, undisputed right, title yeah. fights. It's ridiculous. Yeah, 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 man. Uh, absolutely, bro. Again, there's so many things involved. There's the, the fighters' personal interests. There's dirty promoters, promoters that don't want to work with each other or fucking different organisations that don't want to unify, this and that. But let me just say this, bro, yeah? Mm. The way things are looking now, I don't even think Yusuke and AJ might happen, bro, because that shit should have been signed till delivered, like... <laughs> don't understand what the delay is because we know that that other fight is happening. He's mandatory, so why is it not happen happening? Yeah, exactly. It, it's just like it's, it's getting to the point beyond silly. But let me let me ask you this, bruv. If they because mm. I've got a feeling it's gonna be if they don't make the use it fight, it's gonna be Dilly and White, bruv. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I don't I don't that doesn't bother me. No. Nah. That that doesn't bother me because <laughs> but I know I know you don't like Dilly and White, and I'm not his biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, but that is your boy, bro. No, no, no. It's the truth, boy. Don't try and don't try and, <laughs> I, I I just I'm just gonna be fair to him because he has waited a long time to get his yeah. shot at the title. So it wouldn't bother me. And U6 only just come up. He's had one fight at heavyweight and he's getting a title shot. So that's why it wouldn't bother me if Dillian got the fight. I think it would be a bigger fight as well and it would make more money anyway because yeah. of the whole rivalry thing in this one one. So that fight doesn't bother me. Um, the only other fight I would accept is obviously our boy... Um, King Kong. Shit. King Kong. It's the yeah. only other fight I would accept. Straight. But, um, bro, imagine being 40 and people are still ducking you, bro. <laughs> No, bro, my man's coming out there with diabetes, high blood pressure. You get me? And people are like, nope. <laughs> Fuck yeah. that. Exactly. So, but that's the only other fight I would accept. Any if if they come out with any other name bar those three, bro, you and I are gonna be doing UFC full time, bro. Hey, I hear that, bro. Well, fuck it. Speaking of UFC, shall oh. we, bro? Yes, bro. Let's get into Let's do it, it, bro. Hey, in, bro. The, in the what? In the words of fucking Bruce Buffer, bro. It's time. time. I'm bro. telling you, bro. UFC two six three three main events. We got Izzy versus Vittori two for the mid middleweight title. We got Figueredo versus Moreno for the flyweight title. Also, then, also a rematch. Also a rematch. Yeah. Oh yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. Don't that, oh my days. We're gonna get into the first, but that first. Fight, Jesus Christ! Right, I'm looking forward to that fight more. I am than the the, the, the me, main bro. event. Trust me. And then we got the third fight, bro. That is myself versus Tooth, bro. Leon Edwards versus Nate Diaz. Even though Nate is my boy, but you know Leon. Leon's representing JA and all that, so I can't I can't go against them. But and even bro, as, I say this, bro, yeah, you Jamaicans recent. I know I've been repeating this, bro, but you Jamaicans recently in the UFC, bro, been winning in some big ways, bro. bro. We are getting what we deserve, bro. <laughs> bro, like Aljamain Sterling done some fucking Oscar fucking performance to win his title. And then um, you're illegal. Right. It was so illegal, bro. <laughs> I'm surprised man didn't do time for how illegal it was, bro. Fucking, what's his name? Um, Uriah Hall won by, like, oh. not even doing anything, bro. Mate. Oh, mate. <laughs> and that, that, still, that still gives me shudders, bro. 
Hey, listen, one idea we need to have, yeah? I uh, proposed this on the group a while back, bruv. I'm sure you'll remember it. We need mm. to do a reaction video to all the nastiest injuries. No, you lot can do a reaction video. I'm not involved in your reaction video. Fam, is, you're going to be the best one, bruv. You've got the best reactions <laughs> out of all of us, bruv. I'm telling you. You get me? Uh, we need to do it. No, nah, we'll, 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 get, we'll get that sorted indeed. But yes, people, three main events on that card, stacked card. I think Damian Myers on that card as well, no? Bruv, let me have a look, actually. You might be right, bruv. Damien and mine might still be on that still. Because um, I know that whole card is stat. That whole card Stop. is just from, from prelims as well. So that you you've listed the yeah. So Damien Myers fighting my boy Bilal Muhammad, who oh, should the one that the one that yeah. got poked in the eye, bro. Bro, he bro, that was an Oscar performance, bro. Are you joking, bro? <laughs> Are you fucking joking, bro? Bro, he, he ripped off his lower eyelid, fam. And then, exactly, this is what I mean about you Jamaicans in the UFC recently, bro. You had a bit... Listen, bro. This guy poked the man in the eye and then had the nerve to say... Um, man I, grazed his eyebrow and my man was going bro, on... Listen, yeah, listen, my man, was, my man was going on, like, to say he was a pirate, bro, and he needed an eye patch, bro. Fam, for listen, nonsense. Listen, I'm not accepting this, bro. <laughs> listen, put, put screen share on right now, bro. I'm going to pull up a picture of this guy's eye and you tell me if he's at, you tell me if he's acting, bro. This guy's whole finger went into Bilal Muhammad's eye and then... Yeah, screen share is on. Out. Screen share is on. Is it on? Look, yeah. bro, let me let me pull up a pic, bro. Let me pull up a pic of Bilal Muhammad's eye. And then this guy has the nerve <laughs> in the post-fight interview in his dirty Brum accent, bro. In that fucking filthy Brum accent to say he deserves a title shot, bro. He does like, deserve a title shot, bro. The man's on a on a um, I think he's on undefeated in nine fights. No, eight fights and one no contest, bro. Bro, bro, he's undefeated in nine fights, bro. I don't care, no contest or not, you didn't bro, lose. Listen, you tell me, hold on, you tell me, yeah. I, I need to, I need to know your reaction since you don't want to do no. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, he's yeah, see, man just grazed his eyebrow, bro. Grazed his eyebrow. <laughs> Look where <laughs> this guy. Nah, bro, you Jamaicans are fully parring it, bro. And then has the nerve in his filthy. Fucking uh, rum accent, like, bro. You can't. You can barely speak English, bro. How are you gonna be fucking asking for a title fight, bro? Bro, I understand Kazakhstani and Dagestani fighters. This there, guy's bro. a donut. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I'm telling you, bro. But oh, yeah, let's man. let's go into let's, it. Let's get into it. Let's go into the obviously the main event. Izzy versus Vittori to for the middleweight title. Obviously, they had a fight. I don't know what. I can't remember which UFC it was. It was, um, uh, it was uh, Adesanya's debut or his, if I'm not mistaken, his second fight. My memory's a bit joggy mm. on that one, but I think it was Adesanya's debut. Vittori already had two or maybe three fights already in the UFC at that point. Mm. Um, the Vittori was not Bellator, all right? I don't want you to misquote me here. Not the Bellator champion, but wait for it, bruv. The Venator champion, bruv. <laughs> What's that, bruv? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> oh, is, that some, is, is that the Italian UFC or something? <laughs> exactly, bruv. Bruv, you know them way there, yeah? You know them way there when, when you're going through, like, Cricklewood, Cricklewood yeah? And you know it's a proper area, yeah, yeah. And you see KFC, but it's not Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's like kosher fried chicken, fam. <laughs> bro, that is exactly what Venator is, bro. Not Venator champion, bro. Venator champion. Oh man, <laughs> talk about taking, bro. Listen, whoever whoever came up with that organization, bro. Listen, they, they hire me, bro. All right, just hire me. <laughs> I'll help you, man, out, yeah? I'll do it for free, bruv, because you can't be walking around with a name like Venator, bruv. Oh, I'm telling like, you, but yeah, it yeah, is a rematch. He was um, a champion there. He was a champion there, and then he came into the UFC, and his first three fights, it was like, 
a win loss kind of record. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. he won one, lost one, had a no contest, and then he fought Adesanya, who was making his debut, mm. if I'm not mistaken, or it was Adesanya's second fight. And Adesanya won by split decision. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the fight too tough. I do remember Adesanya like being leaps and bounds ahead of him in terms of the striking aspect yeah. of the fight. But um, Vittori had him down for a bit and manhandled him uh, at shades of young. Yeah, two takedowns. You got, you got two takedowns in the last round. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, it, it was up in the air. It was a close fight. It was up in the air. People debate or argue or speculate that it should have gone to um, Vittori. Again, I remember watching the fight. I don't remember it very, very clearly. I haven't gone back and watched it again. But at the time, when I was watching it, I thought Adesanya had won it. Um, but yeah, so I'm not. Have you seen Vittori recently, bro? On his recent round? No, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't seen um, any of his fights recently. Bro, he's been. But he's, I know he's been manhandling guys. Yeah, bro, he's been on a tear, bro. He's been on a tear, bro. So that loss against Adesanya was his last loss. I think his last loss, yeah. Yeah, he's been on like a five or six fight win streak. Mm -hmm. And against good guys as well. He fought um, a, a top five guy, Jack Hermanson. He fought Kevin Holland as well, no? Yeah, Kevin Holland in his last fight on short mm. notice because Kevin Holland was meant to fight Darren Till. Okay. Um, and Darren Till pulled out due to an injury. And then um, that fight... Um... Sorry, no, 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 no. Um, Vittori was meant to fight Darren Till. Darren Till mm. pulled out in an injury and Kevin Holland last minute took, took the fight. But yeah, he manhandled Kevin Holland mm. as well. And he got like 11, I think he got 11 takedowns in that fight. Yeah, completely manhandled him. But mm. Kevin Holland is one of those guys, he's very self-destructive, bruv. Like, if he goes in there and he knows he's going to lose, he will do everything he can to lose. Bruv, I'm telling you, you ever watch one of this guy's fight? Like, don't get me wrong, bruv, spectacular fighter. What he's mm. done to certain people, bruv, his knockout of Joaquin Buckley, who was the guy that done the two-touch kick. You remember the one that yeah. went viral? He knocked him out so badly, my man's mouthpiece came flying out like it was fight night round four, bruv. You remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And the, and the mouth guard went flying out. He done that to him. He fucking knocked Jacare out cold from a punch while being on the bottom. And Jacare, as we know, jiu-jitsu legend, bruv. Mm -hmm. So if that guy has you on the ground, you're pretty much fucked, bruv. Mm -hmm. He knocked him out with one punch off his back, which was insane. So Kevin Holland had a few good fights. He went in his debut fight. He had a war with Thiago Santos, who had just come off... Um, the, the fight with your boy Bones. So, mm, yeah, he's a good fighter, but it, he's got one of those mental blocks, bro. Mm. You know, if he knows he's going to lose a fight, he's he's going to do everything he can to lose a fight. Like his last fight against Vittori, he just let him take him down. And his fight before that with Derek Brunson, he just let him take he just let him take him down. But anyway, we're getting too much into Kevin Holland. Vittori is a beast, bro. He, his last few fights, he's definitely stepped up. He's been training in um, Anaheim with Rafael Cordero, who's another legendary MMA coach. The guy who bought you the likes of Vandele Silva. Um, he also trains my boy, the Iranian dude, Benil Dariush. So he's definitely stepped up. You know, he's stepped up in competition. He's stepped up in his training. He's stepped up in his ability. But would that be enough to beat the style bender? Well, this is it. This is it. Because from what I saw, saw yeah. from the first fight, Israel had the first two rounds, kept him on the outside, was doing what Israel does, was just picking him off piece by piece. And it was only until the third round that Vittori realised and got close Obviously, Izzy's got the, the height and reach advantage. So, <clears throat> but Vittori got cl close, managed to take him down twice and caused him a bit of problem. So, I think the question for me is, do you think that Vittori can get close enough to Izzy to basically just manhandle him? Just like what we saw a little bit from um, in the light heavyweight fight, the loss that um, Israel had to 
to Jan. I don't know, bro. I, I like, and that's the thing. Is he like? Look, I love Yarn. I love Yarn for several reasons. He's an entertaining fighter. He's not boring. He's career. He's charismatic, and he's fucking Polish, bro. You get me? Jin dobre moi polski brat. You get me? All my Polish stones out there, Wagwan. But he's not anything special, bro. Mm. He's not no. John Jones, he's not no Anderson Silva, he's not no Demetrius Johnson, he's not no Jose Aldo or Conor McGregor, he's just one of these, he fills in the gap until one of these special guys come along. Mm. Do I think the weight had the part to play in it? Yeah, absolutely, because mm. he was fighting someone that was 20 to 25 pounds heavier than him. Do I think a part of his ego um, got way too ahead of himself, yeah, because he was already overlooking Yarn and talking about John Jones and mm. shit like that. Um, so he was taken down by relatively a, a not a spectacular fighter and manhandled. Can Vittori do that? Yeah, he possibly can, but at the same weight class and with Adesanya obviously having something to prove now because he's coming off a loss. Mm. We're at a crossroads now. Do we see a two-fight skid like we kind of did with Nganu after he mm. lost to Stipe and then he lost to uh, Derek Lewis because, you know, he, he became a little less confident in himself and his abilities? Or do we see him just bounce back and fuck someone up? Like... Um, or is it against Costa? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or, or several guys out there who have who have had one loss and came back, like Stipe, for example. He lost to DC the first time. And he came back and then he fucked him up. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, and then he went and fucked him up again. So, we're at that crossroads where I would put my money. I, I would put my money on the safe bet on this one. I would go with Adesanya winning this. I think he's very focused. That hype has been derailed. The talk of John Jones and all this shit has now kind of been deaded. And he's got something to prove now. You know, he's really got something to prove. Um, Vittori, on the other hand, if he does win, hats off to him. But I don't think he's anything special. I think he's a, a beatable guy. You get me? I think um, a lot of fighters out in the division could cause him a lot of problems, like Robert Whitaker could cause him a lot of problems, I think um, Darren Till can cause him even a lot of problems um, Jared Cannonier can cause him problems, so do you know what I mean, he, he's still a beatable guy in my eyes. What's his weaknesses? Like, what, what do you, Why do you believe that all these fighters could beat him? Like, what, what are the weaknesses that um, you can see being exploited by Israel and all these other fighters that you, um, that you listed? Well, I think Israel's already shown that he can beat guys that are pressure fighters and come to grapple and, and wrestle. And, and his resume in the UFC is not full of them, but he's got a few decent wins. Like he's beaten Derek Brunson. Yeah, right? that was that, that's a prime example. Yeah, he's beaten um Paolo Costa. You know, he's beaten um to a certain extent. I hate to throw my because this is our boy. When we're talking about boys, you know who I'm gonna bring up, bruv, the soldier of God, Yoel Romero. Mm. So I don't want to use that as an example, but, you know, um, he's beaten a lot of names, bro. Top, top names, top tier. Mm. And he's even beaten Robert Whitaker to some extent, is a pressure fighter as well himself. That, mm. that, who's not shy to grapple, who's not shy to take the fight to the ground and wrestle. So, and I, I just think these guys are better than Vittori. No disrespect mm. to Vittori, he's a good fighter. He's definitely earned his shot. Mm. He's come up the long way, he's come up the hard way, but yeah, I just see, as you as you said, man, is he picking him apart from the outside? Um, maybe there may be a few takedowns here and there, but by now, Izzy surely must have learned his lessons from the yarn fight and be able to get back up. Well, of course. Avoid the ground for long periods of time, especially fighting someone who's going to be in and around the same weight as he is. 
Yeah, 100%. That's a final question before I ask you for a prediction to tooth. If Izzy were to lose, where would that leave him? Because we know he's all about the legacy. We know he's been chatting off his mouth and basically saying that, yeah, I'm the best, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. And don't get me wrong, people, I'm a I'm an Izzy fan, but he got too big for his boots, talking about the GOAT, and he had to be brought down a peg. But yeah, if Izzy were to lose this fight, where would that leave him? It, um, I know, obviously, you. I know, I know what you're like. It's not about going unbeaten and blah, 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 blah. But considering that people don't even rate the Tory as one of the elite in the uh, middleweight division, what would that do to Izzy if he were to lose this fight? Um, his stock will definitely decrease, but it's not anything that I'd be too concerned about because he's still got a lot of, a lot of time in his career, man. You know what I mean? He's still got plenty of years to go on. Um, and there's still plenty of fights out there for him that he can win and get back on that title, um, get back to that title. You know, he's got, I mean, I guess they'll give him like a, a tune-up fight, like someone like Jack Hermanson or something to fight. But I don't see this being detrimental. It's almost like what happened to Ngannou, bro. You know, mm. same thing. Like, he just became gun-shy. He lost a bit of confidence in himself. He got knocked down a peg. He went on a two-fight skid, and then he came back just possessed, bro. Mm. And I just see the same with Izzy. And, and, bro, maybe it's written in the stars. Like, I said the same thing about the yarn fight. I said the same thing about the yarn fight, bro. Mm. Maybe it's written in the stars. You know, your first Italian UFC um, champion, period. Do you get what I mean? It's a rematch. There's bad blood. There's a history there. I just saw their interview that they done on ESPN with Michael Bisping, and that shit was heated, bro. So both of them are coming for blood, and maybe it might be Vittori's night, but just from a technical standpoint, I just don't see it. I think Izzy striking is just next level, bro. There's a reason mm. he's he's the style bender. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. But yeah, uh, prediction wise, I'm going with Izzy. Um, I would say decision, man. I want to say decision. It wouldn't surprise me if I went to decision because I think, apart from two fights in the UFC, Vittori's fights have all gone to a decision. So he hasn't been stopped. Yeah. I think I'm right in saying that he hasn't been stopped. No, he hasn't. Uh, no, I, think, uh, I think he's been subbed. I think he's been subbed, but we know that Izzy's not a sub special yeah so um and they've already gone the distance one in a close uh, distance once in a close fight that was a free rounder though to be fair yeah but at the same time um Vittori's last two fights were five rounders they yeah. were both main event fights and mm. Izzy's been fighting five round fights even though he's finished them early the training process you know you don't train like, you still train for five rounds. You don't train mm. thinking you're going to knock the guy out in the first round. That might be your game plan, but mm. you still need to have the cardio and the preparation to go a full five rounds if the fight goes there. That's that's why, it, even in boxing, when you, like, you know, when you're an amateur, you have, like, what, three, four round, three round yeah, fights? An amateur. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, turn, when you turn pro, your first few fights are four round fights. And mm. then as you climb up the rank, they become eight round fights. 10 and rounds, then and, then and, then the and then, yeah, exactly. When you become a champion, you, you do a 12 round fight, so you know, you still prepare, even if you're Deontay Wilder with a one punch knockout power, you still prepare your training camp, still prepares you for a 12 round fight with strength and conditioning, cardio, so on and so forth. So, um, I would love to see a knockout though, I would love to see like a roundhouse kick, like similar to a Paulo Costa finish, you know, but. We'll see. It's going to be a great fight. That's definitely going to be a good fight. It, it, it is going to be a good fight. I'm, I'm going to call Izzy in four, bro. I think he's going to stop him in four. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if it goes to a decision. Like I don't think. I think that's a fair shout to say. But it's going to be a good fight, people. We are excited for that one, and we'll see what happens in that one. But to be honest, we're both more excited for. The, the the second main event, bro. The little guys, bro. The, the little, little guys, guys because. 
this uh, Figueredo, Figueredo versus Moreno flyweight title. Um, first fight was at was at two five six, ended in a majority draw. Oh mate, fight of the year contender, just from zero to one hundred, from the first bell in round one to the last bell in round five. It was chaos, and we loved it. Absolutely fucking loved it, and we're gonna see it run back again uh, this weekend. Um, tooth. Bro, for those, who, for those who haven't seen the first fight, you have to just pause this video right now. Go watch that fight and then come back to this video. Bro, yeah. That's what I can say. You have to, because honestly, it was like, bro. When you were watching that fight, at any point, did you know who was going to win? No. After round one, I was like, bro. What the fuck am I watching? And then as it got deeper and deeper into the fight, I was like, I can't even score this shit, bro. <laughs> like, I can't even score it. Like, bro, I'm not... Like, when I'm watching fights, I'm not sitting there with a pen and paper taking scores. But, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, he got round one, he got round two. Mm. Like, I couldn't tell. I really could not tell who won that fight. And at the end of the day, the draw was the best. Oh, um, yeah. So they could run it back run it back yeah bro and you know there has to be if the second fight is anything as good as the first fight there has to be a trilogy bro this is on some arturo gatti and mickey ward shit bro do you know what i mean like that first fight was that version of mickey ward and arturo gatti one bro it was just chaos bro and the little mexican goth boy done well bro like honestly i thought hey <laughs> You know, bro, listen. Man <laughs> said the little Mexican golf boy, bro. <laughs> bro, you know, at the beginning of the video, yeah, where you have like a little segment, you throw, like, bro, that's the segment you got to throw in, bro, yeah. The little Mexican golf boy, bro. He, hey, he done business out there because before the fight, I had my money on Figueredo, bro. Figueredo. I think everyone did. Yeah, bro. The run Figueredo's been on. He's only had one loss in the UFC, and that was against um, Juicy A Formiga. And that was a decision. And, and simply because he was just relying on his finishing ability. His yeah, because he's got, he's got one punch knockout power. Mm -hmm. Or if he gets you down, he could fucking take your neck, take your arm, take your back. Yeah, you he, loves, he loves it. He loves it. He, he, used the, he uses the choke as a defense to the tape, like when people take him down, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's amazing on the ground as well. He's, he's like, you know, all these Brazilians, bro. All these Brazilians, like, they're, they're born doing jujitsu, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, they already know how to pass guard in their mother's womb, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you. So the guy's just got finishing ability, bro. And after that loss to Juicio Formiga, I think he learned how to go a three-round fight if it needs to. But he he, st he was still finishing people. You know, mm. he finished um, Joseph Benavides twice. He finished that dude, Alex uh, Perez, within the first few seconds of the fight. He finished that fight so quickly that Dana White was like, fuck it, you're not going back to Brazil. You're staying in Vegas. We'll get you. We'll get you another fight for December, which was the um. What's my man's name? I'll just keep thinking of little Mexican golf boy now. What's his name? What's his name, bro? The Mexican kid. I forgot his name, bro. I can't. I I, I don't know where you're going. We'll get to be honest, bro. You know what's funny? Yeah, is that um. My mind has gone blank because now all I have in my head is a picture of this little Mexican golf boy, bro. <laughs> but yeah, him. <laughs> we'll just call him that for now. Um, he said that, yeah, he will set up the fight with him. And that's what eventually created this fucking juggernaut of an, of an event, bro. A juggernaut of a fight, bro. Absolutely. It was, it was crazy. Like, I was watching it back earlier. Yeah. And bro, some of the kicks and thumps that I was hearing, I don't understand how either of them, bro, no, I don't understand how none of them went to sleep. 
Yeah, bro. None out of the two of them went to sleep. It was madness. You know that one's there where you, like, both men were just at like, Super Saiyan level four, bruv. And it was just like, yeah, no one's getting hurt. Nothing's happening. We're just going to go until we, the bell rings and we can't go no more. That's what that fight reminded me of. Bro, it was so mad that, it, like, you can't even look at it from a technical point of view, bruv. There's, you know, you can't break it down because, bruv, yeah, it, was, it, was, it, bro, it was just hands and legs everywhere. Trust me, bro. It was just war, straight up war. But in this fight that's coming up, I'm going to go with Moreno, bro. The little Mexican golf boy. That's his name, Moreno. What are you saying? You think, you think his takedowns are going to be enough? To be honest, I don't think it's going to be takedowns that's going to win him the fight. I think it's going to be his counter-striking um, that's going to either win him the fight or even get him the finish in the fight. I think that... Even though Figueredo carries the the one punch knockout power and the finishing ability, what I see happening is it will go deep into like rounds three and four, mm. and Moreno will make him wilt with just the counter striking. Because Moreno's Mexican, bruv, man. These guys don't give up, bruv. They don't quit. You could kill them they still come back and fucking fight. <clears throat> so, but at the same time, it's, it's just so hard to tell, man. It could easily go the other way as well. It could easily go the other way as well. But what do you think is going to be the difference in this fight? I mean, like, as you said, we couldn't break down the first. There's nothing technical. You can't go and say, all right, cool. Well, this is how this person's going to win. That's how that person's going to win. Because they threw everything at each other and nothing worked. Yeah, so I, what the card, what could the cardio man? The cardio because um my man um Figueredo mm. had like a, a the shortest turnaround ever in title fight history, bro. I think it was a space of like 20 something days mm. between his last defense and the uh, Moreno fight. So imagine the toll that took on his body. Now he's had like what six months, seven months to prepare yeah. for this fight. That's definitely got to play suck part in it. And if it doesn't, it just goes to show how much of a beast my man is. That having a six-month training camp or having a 20-day training camp made no difference. He was still an, a fucking animal. Like a wolverine, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like a honey badger. Mm. Like <clears throat> nothing, like nothing. It doesn't matter what terrain you put him in, what position you put him in, he's still going to come out just as vicious um but that should technically be be the difference so imagine that first fight was put together on late notice and they put on a show like that bro mm. logically speaking <coughs> sorry bro logically oh. speaking this fight should be even more than what the first fight offered you know, you know what it is though is that because it was on short notice that's probably why we got the spectacle that we got whereas I can see because they've had time to prepare and it's been a longer training camp it could be a lot more conservative yeah conservative because both men know what's going on Figueredo's not going to want to lose Moreno's going to want to win but I don't think nah, listen both their both camps their trainers would have tore them a new asshole after that fight in tech from a technical standpoint so i think they'll be a lot better prepared and it could be a little bit more cagey than the first fight i mean if we get anything like the the, the first fight i'll be like happy days but i just think that all everything that happened i think there'll be a little bit more cagey i think it'll be a little, little bit more structured and i think that it will be the test of figueredo's one punch knockout power compared to Moreno's takedowns and his cardio because his cardio is crazy. And I think even in the first fight, we could see that in rounds four and five, Figueredo was getting tired and it was taking its toll, whereas Moreno looked like he got a new lease of life. Yeah, he did get a second win, didn't he, in the mm. later rounds. Um, mm. And that, yeah, and that could be attributed to the fact that I said, you know, uh, Figueredo took that fight on late notice. At the same time, I see what you're saying, but traditionally, neither of these guys have been cagey conservative fighters, bro. 
every mm. fight they've been in, it's been swinging for the fences. You know what I mean? Like just the all out war, all out attack. The thing that may be a bit concerning was that when I was watching the UFC like countdown episode, Moreno said he felt Figueredo's power and he wasn't afraid of it. That's mm. true. Like, you know, once you've been in there with a guy and he hasn't really, like, knocked you out or anything like that, you don't, you're not as scared, mm. I don't to use that word, but you're not as concerned. Yeah. Now that you've felt that power, you feel like, you know, the next time I go in. But that could easily be, you know... His downfall. Like, his downfall, bruv. Because, all right, you might have felt his power, but it's not to say that this guy can't knock a fucking mule out, bro. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, that's what I'm... So, yeah, if he just walks into one of Figueredo's heavy-handed punches, bro, it could be lights out, night-night, early, bro. Mm. But that's, again, that's what makes this fight so fucking tantalising, bro. Oh, mate, I cannot yeah. wait. Cannot um, wait. Who, who so are you going for, bro? Who are you going for on this? I'm gonna go Figueredo in three. Deep. I oh. think. I think. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna touch him. I think. I think it's just gonna be three rounds of straight fire. But I think Figueredo's just gonna touch him with one of those right hands and then hammer fist and call it night night. But I do believe if it goes into rounds four and five, I think Moreno may may um may pull something out the bag yeah bro that's why that's that's exactly my prediction bro late rounds moreno finish bro mm. and i just and I, and I don't see it being a finish like a no, maybe it might be a knockout or a technical knockout but mm. i see it more of figueredo wilting to the pressure and just not having enough to to keep up and no. Moreno just stepping up a gear and putting it on him in the later rounds. But boy, I can't people, wait. Can't wait for this one. Can't wait. And as people, people, as Tooth said, if you haven't seen the first fight, pause now, go and watch it and come back. Because honestly, if we get anything like that in the second fight, you are going to be in for something crazy. And it's, it's, it's going to be so exciting and we cannot wait wait for that fight. Looking forward to that fight more than the main event, personally, because it's just going to be outright war and that's what we're anticipating, that's what we're expecting and hopefully that's what comes to pass. But hopefully this time we get a winner at the end of the fight. Um, but yeah, we're going to move on to the final fight. This is where... Uh, Tooth and I draw enemy lines, bruv. <laughs> because it is Leon Edwards versus Nate Diaz oh, um, at Well Awake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, both fighters coming off a long layoff. Um, I know that obviously you showed the um, uh, the Leo. Um, that's the fight that Leon Edwards had earlier in the year, but obviously it was a no contest because of the, the eye poke. Unfortunately, yeah. so they've cut, so he's facing Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz not fought since 2019. Leon Edwards hasn't fought properly since again uh, since 2019. I think that was against Dos Santos. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tooth, your boy's coming back. He's decided to come up from the shadows um, to fight Leon Edwards. What was what was the reason for him coming back apart from a little payday? And that's all it was, bro. That is all it was, man. Honestly, uh, I think... And it's strange to me why he took this fight, because it's Leon fucking Edwards. Like, in the words of Conor McGregor, who the fuck is that guy? Not, who the f*** is that guy? Who the f*** is that? Fuck off, bro. He is the next contender against bro. Usman, bro. Usman against Usman. That rematch needs to be had. Listen, there. Yeah. I'm sorry to break it to you, bro. But no one cares about Leon <laughs> Edwards, bro. Boring fighter. Boring personality. Can't speak English, all right, with that dirty brum accent, bro. Like, that's the only reason I want him to lose, so they never put a microphone in front of the table. 
can't stand that fucking accent, bruv. And, and I know people from Birmingham ain't watching this, so we're cool, bruv. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> but if you, if you do happen to be that one dude from bruv that stumbles across this video and gets this far in the podcast to hear me slag off bruv, then you can fuck off as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bruv, do you know what? That's the new intro. All right, that's the new intro, bruv. Fuck Birmingham, right? Go oh, to- this guy. Go learn to fucking speak English, bro. Listen, my guy Leon Edwards is on an unbeaten nine-fight streak, right? He's paid his dues. His last loss was to the current champ, so it's not like he lost to one of these chumps, right? He deserves his shot, but I understand why he's taking the Diaz fight. Exposure. You said, who the fuck cares? If he gets a win over Nate Diaz, that brings his name up. Yeah, I People mean, start way, talking about him. In a way, I do like sympathize with Leon a little bit simply because before the COVID thing happened, before the pandemic happened, he was scheduled to fight Tyron. And this was Tyron, pardon me, this was Tyron after Tyron had lost to um, Kamaru. Mm. So this was Tyron's first fight after his first loss in several years. So he missed that opportunity due to COVID. And then we, we saw the skid Tyron went on. Mm. Losing to Colby, losing to Gilbert, losing to Luke. Yeah. And, you know, it was a shame because that fight would have done him a lot of good in terms yeah. of getting exposure. Mm. Exposure, yes. Fans... No. Winning over the UFC sort of matchmakers? No. Because, bruv, like, you've got the records, man. Pull it up. How many decisions has this guy gone to, bruv? Yeah, no, nah, he's, got, he's got a lot of decisions on his, on his resume. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's just one of those things, like, you're a good fighter. You could be a great fighter, but you're not putting asses in seats, bruv. And to make matters worse is, like, you have no charisma, bruv. And I don't... And, and these, these are all facts. I'm not just trying to have a go at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He only gets promoted in the UK, bruv. It's every, like, every three months you see a BT special interview with him. You never see him on ESPN. You never see him out there on the other side of the pond. Yeah, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't got the exposure in the US. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and that is part of the problem. That's part of the reason as to why he keeps getting overlooked when yeah. it comes to the title fights. But what I will say is, is that he's earned the right now. So my whole thing is, we know that Kamaru is fighting um, Colby next. Yeah. But if if Edwards were to come through this fight with Nate, come through this fight with Nate, he should have the next shot at the I, title because I think he's earned the right to have the shot at the title. I think I think the UFC played him with this Nate Diaz fight because even if he does win. And I, and I, look, as much as Nate is my boy, I love Nate. I grew up off Nate. You know, Stockton 209, motherfuckers, all day. Oh, but, yeah, Nate's my guy as well, bro. But at the same time, like, Nate has achieved nothing at welterweight. It's not his natural weight class, all right? Um, apart, uh, he fought McGregor twice at welterweight. He fought um, my boy Jorge. Jorge. Yeah, he fought mm. Jorge at welterweight. But the majority of his career and all his most notable wins and lightweight, wins, isn't it? lightweight, yeah, he's mm. a lightweight fighter, bro. He only goes up to welterweight for these sort of big fights. Mm. And the two, and the first McGregor fight was short notice, and yep. because McGregor lost, there obviously had to be a rematch. So he had to fight the rematch at welterweight. And then again, the Jorge fight was uh, was. BMF fight, do you know what I mean? Mm. It was a spectacle, it was one of those big fights. So that fight was so big that Canelo, I think Canelo was fighting your boy Rocky Fielding that night. Oh no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to, bro, imagine they had to, they had to, they had to pause it. They had to pause it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, imagine how pissed you must be if you're Canelo having to wait till that fight finishes before you can go out. And Let me say something. That would have never happened to Floyd, bro. Never. <laughs> true, true. Exactly, bro. But yeah, man. So, um, 
he, he's not a welterweight fighter, bro. Mm-hmm. So they've given him this fight for the exposure, but at the same time, it's almost like a nothing fight because if you beat Nate, he's like he's not a top five in the welterweight division. He's not even a welterweight. It's almost like a double-edged sword. It's like, well, we're going to give you this fight, and if you win, you're expected to win. So we can still take our time with you in giving you a title shot. Fact, I don't think so. I, I, I get what you're saying, but I don't think so. I don't, but because I think there's no one else that I would put above him now that hasn't already had a shot. Like I think he's earned his time. He's earned his stripes. And I think he deserves a shot. Now, do I agree with you 100%? Let's, let's, just, say, you 100%. let's just say if Colby wins. Oh, then it, then it, then that, then it's just a rematch. That just goes straight into a rematch. Do you know what I mean? And then he gets put on the back burner. Whereas if, if Usman wins, I think he gets the shot. But yeah. let me ask you a question. Go on. If Nate wins, yeah. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so you have to give him the shot, bro, because he's a big enough name. And he'll talk so much shit. Yeah, they, like, would, like, they would give that, him the shot. And, and bro, you're forgetting as well, yeah. Jorge's there as well. Despite Jorge losing twice now to Kamaru, mm. he's still top three, top four. Oh, and yeah, I know that, but like... And there's yeah. bad blood. No, but the point I'm trying to make is there's bad blood between mm. Leon and Jorge. Remember when... Oh, um, yes, yes, you're right, yeah. Jorge fucked him up backstage, the three-piece and the combo. Mm. Um, in, in London, when Jorge knocked out Darren Till and then backstage... Leon tried to pull up on him and Jorge was having none of it and just fucking lit him up. There's that fight as well. So this is what I mean. It's almost like they've given him this fight to buy time. The Bilal Muhammad fight was like, all right, if you win this, then you probably will get the winner of the title fight. But because that was a no contest, it's kind of knocked him down a peg. They've Mm. given him... I could be wrong. This is all just speculation. But... They've given him Nate Diaz, knowing that this is a fight he should win comfortably against a guy who's very inactive, who's on the back end of his career. Um, he's lost, like, his his last five fights, you know, he's he's bounced in and out of the win column. Mm. And, um, yeah, like, it's... it's he, and he's not a natural welterweight, rap, so... Mm. It's almost like biding time with him, mm. and they can still, they can still like. For example, if he was to fight Jorge instead of Nate, mm. then I, I'll be fully on board with your projection, bro. Mm. If he was to fight Jorge, he can't fight anyone else below. Do you know what I mean? He can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he has to now fight. For the title fight because the top three in the division are Usman, Colby, Jorge. Mm. If he fought one of those three guys, then it's look, automatically you get the next title shot. But because he's still fighting someone like Nate, and before that he fought someone like Bilal, it's like, well, you've still not beaten one of the top three guys. Mm. But we'll wait and see. Like if he goes out there and sparks Nate Diaz out in the first round, which I doubt he would because that's not his style. Mm. And yeah, why not? He 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 will get a lot of exposure because it's Nate Diaz. That's it. It's on a big card. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that like like you said, the run he's been on eight fights and one no contest blood. Undefeated in nine fights, bro. He's he's got he's got the sort of um he's got the resume to to be a legit contender. Mm. And as you said as well, his last fight was his last loss was against the current champion, bro. Mm. Um, but again, like, look, the way this fight goes in my eyes is Leon goes out there, point fights Nate Diaz to the death, gets that win, decision comfortable, and that's it. Like, we'll see what happens with him next. We'll see what they decide. He is literally at the mercy of the UFC. He's in no position to be calling any shots. He ain't no Colby Covington. He ain't no Jorge Masvidal. He ain't no Conor McGregor. He's just always going to be one of those guys that if they want you to fight for the title... They'll, they'll, they'll call you. They'll call you. You ain't, yeah. you, you ain't calling none of the shots out here. No, 100%. At the same, at the same I just want to say this, bruv, yeah? If Nate shows up, bruv, 
And if Nate does what he did to like Anthony Pettis, mm. if Nate does what he done to like um um oh, I forgot my man's name now, uh, Michael Michael uh, Johnson, mm. and he goes out there and pulls out a prime Nate Diaz performance, bro. Very unlikely, very very unlikely, and I wouldn't say bet your house on it, but boy, you would like if you were to put some money on that outcome you'd get a lot of money back, bro. Oh, yeah, 100%. There is that possibility, man, because, you know, Nate goes out there and makes a fight ugly. He makes fighters uncomfortable. And he's got this never-say-die attitude, even with the Jorge fight, when he was getting pieced up for all four rounds or three rounds, whenever they stopped that fight. He he was always in the fight, despite getting fucked up. Like you just okay, I think, I think Jorge touched him like a hundred and something times or whatever. That yeah. was something dumb. Yeah. Yeah. He's something kind of, dumb. He's kind of got that, let's say that Tony, Tony Ferguson sort of thing about him before obviously Tony went on the skid. Whereas mm. like you're fighting a boogeyman. You're literally fighting a zombie. And there's risks attached to that because you need to be sharp. You need to be on point. You need to be like a sniper, bro. And if he, for some reason, is not a shark, then Nate will fully, fully expose that, man. And at the same time, I think, legitimately, if Nate gets him in a position to finish him, not necessarily with strikes, but with his jiu-jitsu, which we know Nate is world-class at, mm. um, and I know Leon's been working on his jiu-jitsu, and I know he's improved on his jiu-jitsu and his grappling, but it's not his go to it's not his game it's not his game his game is kickboxing point fighting striking um death by a thousand cuts i'm talking death by a thousand cuts oh i'd like to see that put the meme in bro (laughs) get me so yeah if nate gets into the ground and into his world boy i could see subbing him but very unlikely very very now we're just going on into like (laughs) <laughs> we're opening a Pandora's box here, but yeah, Leon, uh, 100%. Should, Leon should win comfortably. Or my other prediction is just like all the other Jamaicans in the UFC as of lately. Fuck off! He's gonna win in some big way. He'll like, win clean, like clean. Bro, it'll, it will like, be a masterclass. Like halfway through round three, Usada's gonna come in the ring and say, <laughs> "Nate Diaz, you failed a drug test for smoking weed." We give the win to, to Leon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, that's, if that that's, happens, that's Nate's fault. That's bro, Nate's fuck listen, up. I'm telling you, Leon is either going to win decisively on points or he's going to win in the most boogiest fashion. Like, bro, I'm putting it out there and it's going to happen. Because you Jamaicans have consistently proved in the UFC as of late, bro. All your victories have been just bare bug, bro. <laughs> it is the Lord watching over us. That's what it is, bro. That is exactly what it is. But two, just just imagine this year, because we need to wrap up. Yeah. Nate wins, yeah. And then we have Usman versus Nate for the title. And then Jorge, <laughs> Jorge versus Edwards on the, as the co-main event, bro. That would be that would be sick, bro. But just imagine if Colby wins, bro. Oh you know, God. Imagine the spanner that's thrown in the works. Yeah, that's why he's not going to win. <laughs> that's hey, why he's man. not going to win. As much as, look, as much as he's a dick, bro. But I get a part of it is all, like, an act. Mm. Bro, he's a fucking good fighter, man. Yeah, he is. He is. He is. He is. Fighter, he is. And I can't, I, can't, I can't wait for that fight either. But, Tooth, we got to wrap up, bro. We got to wrap up. I mean, people, this is it. This is, what I, this is what I say to you. Every time we have this fight talk, yeah, Tooth and I, we can go on for hours. Like, literally, we've just got so much to talk about. And there's so much that goes on, bruv. So much wealth of knowledge. And the ban- obviously, the banks is always for days, bruv. Uh, no, no, no one can take that away from us. But um, we've got to wrap up there. Um, people, let us know what you think in the comments. Who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be Izzy? Is it going to be Vittori? Is it going to be Figueredo? Is it going to be Moreno? Is it going to be Edwards? Is it going to be Diaz? How are they going to win? Let us know. And obviously, my guy, Edwards, being the Jamaican that he is, will win in a clean fashion and get his title shot against Usman. Don't let this tooth guy try and talk nonsense in your ears hole, yeah? 
we are here to take over the UFC, just as our African brothers are start are, are taking over the UFC right now. But um, want to say thank you very much, to my guy. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. Say, bro. All I can say is the Africans are doing it in a more convincing fashion than the Jamaicans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Yo, hey, bro, much love, man, as always, yeah. bro. I love doing this shit, bro. We'll see you same time next week, people. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Of, that's it, people. It will be same time next week because we'll have the review of 263, and you're not going to want to miss that. Probably have the truth on here as well. Uh, people, get on to the truth from Mr. K.A. because we were supposed to do the, the season review for, for, for the past couple of weeks now, and they're, 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 they're lagging behind. Tooth is going to get onto them as well because he was looking forward to it also. But we're going to have that. We're also going to have the preview for the Euros coming up as well. And we're going to be doing bits and pieces on that. Which, hey, don't even say it, bruv. I know. <laughs> don't even, bruv. Listen, have a good night, people. <laughs> At some point, right, in the future, we will have NBA. <laughs> I'm done, bro. I'm fucking done out here, bro. <laughs> oh. oh man, at some point we will have NBA talk. I know we've been saying it like two will tell you. We've been saying it since Timbuk2 was invented, yeah. Mm. But um at some point it will happen. But gonna have boxing talk as well as the fights keep coming up gonna have athletics olympics all of that so we've got so much content stuff to come out people but um that is it from us as usual before we go make sure to like share comment and subscribe to the channel don't forget to join our social media pages as well links will be in the description and people stay safe out there and we shall see you very very soon peace peace